What's up, YouTube? Midwest Tour View here back again. So, um, on this particular vid, guys, video or whatever, uh, we're going to talk about the uh, new tools I got from Ulsa Tools. Hopefully, you guys can see it. Uh, so, I uh, got this half inch um, split beam torque wrench. Uh, from Ulsa Tools. Make sure you guys can see that. I don't know how well everything is coming in based upon where I'm seated. But anyway, got this half inch torque wrench uh, the split beam design and uh, I'm really, really happy about it. Um, for DIY use, um, I guess let me start over. Part number, where is the part number on this thing? Uh, part number is 1242. Hopefully you can see that. One, two, four, two. Um, half inch dry split beam, made in Taiwan. Uh, no ambiguities about that. Um, and uh, I'm really happy to have it because I have two other um, torque wrenches. I think one is in inch pounds and one is in foot pounds, but it doesn't go very high, like maybe a hundred foot pounds to that, to something to that extent. Um, so this is by far the, um, the highest, I don't know, rate it, uh, I guess, if you will, um, torque wrench that I own. So, um, you know, they, they, they talk about this one is 32 tooth uh, design, 50 to 250 foot pounds, plus or minus 4% accuracy with the 15 degree arc, swing arc for the head and a polished finish, right? So looking at some of the specs uh, in comparison to like CDI and some of the other torque wrenches that are out there, um, you know, this is in line as far as the, the specifications. Um, but the biggest thing is, is the price. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the, the key features of this particular torque wrench. But uh, let, me, let me get up, make sure you guys can see it, because I don't want anything to be lost on this one here. Um, but you guys see here, also tools, really, oh, look at that. You see my face on there, guys. <laughs> but um, really, really nice, nice finish. Um, this is the 15 degree um, swing that they talk about on there. Um, so you, you have a little bit of an offset. There's been some videos out there I've watched where they say that if it's, um, if it's in that position or in that position, you do lose a little bit of the, um, the accuracy uh, versus when it's straight on. I know there's been a number of videos out there about this torque wrench, so I am not trying to um, act like I know anything more than what the other person or people have done, but um, I'm just going to talk about it based upon what I know. But I'm I'm really happy to have it because, uh, like I said, I didn't have one with the same output as this guy here, so it's really really nice to finally have one that's got a little bit more range to it. Um, and I when I was looking at what I wanted to review next from Ulsa Tools, uh, obviously as a brand ambassador, you get to I'm trying to find a towel to wipe some of this crap off of it. But as a brand ambassador, you get to kind of pick what you want to review. And uh, and so um, I've been looking at certain certain things. But, you know, people have certain things that they've already reviewed, like the, you know, Tech May. She's, she's done the uh, wobble extensions. So she did a really, really good job with that. Um, and other people have done. Um, other tools as well. And I think there's been, like I said, a couple videos out there, if not a few videos out there on this particular torque wrench. But I thought, you know what, why not go ahead and request it? Because A, I could use it in my shop. But number two, um, um, I want to review it. So the biggest thing on this guy here, guys, is the price. Um, you can look at the specs. You can see that it's in line with most other torque wrenches that are out there that are split beam design. Um, even the design is fairly close to that. The only thing I don't necessarily 100% like on it is the fact that this is all plastic. It's about, you know, I don't know, 80% plastic and maybe 70% plastic and 30% rubber. And uh, I don't necessarily like that. It would be nice if like maybe this portion was plastic and all of this was rubber. Just kind of get a better grip. But I, then again, I guess it doesn't matter. It is fairly wide, but I have big hands, so... I mean, my hand almost takes up the total length from top to bottom. So um, that's not a big issue. 
Um, from what I've learned about the split beam designs, like I said, I'm not an expert in them, but I did read up on them a little bit. Like I said, the 4% accuracy throughout the entire range of 50 to 250, I think it says. Um, it's got a conversion chart on here so you can convert from foot pounds to newton meters in case you're in the UK um, or working off the metric system. Um, let's see here. Uh, like I said, it's got the conversion chart, 250 range. It's got this flip up style um, um, dial here, the micrometer style dial, I guess is what you want to call it. Um, easy to, to adjust. It's got grooves in here. And the flip so that when you um, well I guess one of the cool things is when you flip it up it locks the dial in place so you can almost have like a two um, or a, a secondary locking mechanism so you have the grooves and the cap that engage with the grooves and the knob but you also when you fold it up it actually activates a lever internally which locks the dial in place so you don't have to worry about accidental changes when you set it to your desired re um, torque spec um, got the rubberized boot to prevent the ingression of dirt into the to the mechanical mechanisms. I guess the split beam designs in general um, are a little bit better or more accurate than your traditional micrometer style because you don't have to worry about uh, locking or resetting the torque wrench back to zero after use, and you can kind of leave it at whatever setting you like um, because it doesn't have the reliance upon the uh, spring inside, which drives the, uh, affects the torque uh, output. So with these is less, less complicated uh, rest reliance upon springs and et cetera, and other mechanical components, uh, making it more accurate and uh, more user-friendly, I guess, if you will. I guess you can, with any type of spring, you can, over time, it will take a set. So if you're, if you're not completely relieving the uh, tension off the spring, it will take a, a, a what they call a compression set um, or set in general, and uh, that will throw off your readings and your accuracy. So, nonetheless, this guy's really, really nice. Um, I'm very happy about it. Uh, we needed it for the shop, you know, torquing wheels and things of that nature. Let's be honest, I've never torqued the wheel on a vehicle. I've just, you know, cranked on it with the breaker bar or whatever and, uh, and called it a day. Uh, but this will allow me the opportunity to really set it and torque it properly, um, you know, as well as other components throughout the shop. Now, granted, it's huge, so it's not like you're going to be like deep down in an engine bay. But, you know, if you're doing head bolts or something like that or whatever, maybe you could use this. So some top engine work, uh, maybe some suspension work. You could use it depending on your ability to get access but yeah, I think it's important to have it. And the biggest thing is the price, right? I think this guy right now uh, is like $129.97 or something to that effect on their website. Um, and then like if you use like my ambassador uh, link, you can save an additional amount of uh, money off this. I think it's like 10%. Um, you can save that off, off the, off the uh, tool as well. So yeah. Um, you know, you can save a little bit more money and you can get yourself a really good torque wrench. So the things I look at is just the overall construction. I look at the accuracy of the tool, something that's mechanical like this, uh, the accuracy, and I kind of compare it to some of the top brands, right? So for a professional mechanic, maybe this would not be what you want, but then again, I don't know, all right? I would consider this tool much better quality than what you would find at Harbor Freight. Um, and some other mid-level brands, I would consider Olsa tools and in in the, what I've read, uh, I'm purely reading off the specifications, um, I would consider uh, Olsa tools would be at the top end of that. Um, but maybe, you know, from a, from a mechanic standpoint, maybe you say, well, I want something that's high reliability or whatever. Maybe you want to go to a CDI or something like that or Snap-on or which makes CDI or vice versa. Um, what else was I going to say about this? I guess the coolest thing about this besides the price is the fact that also tools will warranty this. So if there is a warrantable defect within the, relative to the design and the functionality of the torque wrench, you can warranty it out. Um, and uh, I don't know how that process takes place. I believe also tools is located in Canada, or at least their headquarters is in Canada. So, uh, you know, you would have to reach out to them to figure out how that warranty process works out. 
Uh, and then the other thing is they recommend that you uh, get this uh, calibrated yearly. It does come with a calibration certificate. Um, mine was calibrated by, I guess, Tony. Uh, and it says that uh, the set points are 50, 150, and 250. Then it gives you your min and max based upon the 4% variance. Uh, and then uh, you get your reading. So like for 50 to 50 pounds or 50 foot pounds, it was between uh, 50.2 and 50.0 50, 50 and 50.3 was the max. Uh, and then for 150, it was about 148 to 147.4. And then at 250, 250.4 all the way up to 250.7. So fairly tight. I think when, I, when it was in 150 mode, it was the largest, the largest variance uh approximately you know like less than one foot pound variance between the two um but i mean you know really really nice uh and it does test it per, per den iso 6789 uh so with the, with the international standards and test equipment and etc um but yeah you get this certificate and it says calibration accuracy uh plus or minus one percent at 20 degrees celsius so basically at um, a given temperature, you know, you, you know, obviously there's something called coefficient of thermal expansion and contraction, COTEs for us engineers out there, um, that says that certain metals will behave certain ways at given temperatures. So hot versus cold, we all understand that. Um, but you have to get it calibrated like every year, or they recommend it that you get it done at least once a year. And then if you're going to use it more often, if you're if you are using it in a professional setting, then you want to use it um, or get it calibrated a little bit more frequently than that. So for me, we're going to get it done about a year, and then we have a place locally um, that uh, my company utilizes for calibration. So I would just simply you know take this to them and have them calibrate it. I don't know what the cost would be, but probably not a whole lot of money. Uh, to get it calibrated. And I think that's a small investment, a small price to pay to, in order to have a highly precision tool in your your uh, your arsenal, your setup. So like I said, I'm really, really happy about it. Uh, I'm glad to have it. Shout out to Olsa Tools for supplying the Midwest Tour Review channel with the uh, split beam torque wrench. Um, very, very nice. Let's see here. I don't know. I'm, I, I, re I talked to them about testing out the... Um, um, digital one as well. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, that's a little bit more pricey. Um, so we'll see uh, if they can do that. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, this is really cool. If, if they did, if they said no, I would not be heard about it. Um, but it's got care and maintenance. It's got safety instructions, right? It tells you how to use it, how to set the tone or the, uh, the dial, how to uh, uh, lock it. And, you know, oh, this is bi-directional or not bi-directional, it is one direction, right? So you can only tighten, you cannot unloosen with this type of torque wrench. So that's something to make note of as well. You may need to get yourself a, a uh, micrometer style if you need to um, torque in the opposite direction, but you can do extensions and adapters with this and it gives you the calculations for how to determine your output, your um, based upon the length of the tool versus the length of the extension and et cetera, and it breaks that down for you. So make sure if you buy one of these, you keep this manu this uh, torque wrench instruction manual with you or uh, and keep that. And then on the back of it, it gives you a calibration standard uh, in accordance with the, the ISO specification uh, and ASME, uh, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, um, and then so on and so forth. So make sure you keep this paper with it. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and put mines back into the case um, for safekeeping. So, like once once again, I think it's important to anybody to have one. You don't need to be a mechanic if you're uh, you're going to do any type of work in your shop, whether it be equipment rebuilding, um, um, you know, work on your vehicles, your trucks, your cars, your tractors. Uh, you know, whatever. I mean, if you don't have any of that, or you're not mechanically inclined, you probably don't need it. I have a friend of mine, uh, Ryan, shout out to Ryan if you're watching, buddy. Uh, he went out and bought him a torque wrench because he had to do his brakes on a Subaru and he was basically rebuilding the entire um, setup there and needed to torque certain 
fasteners down in accordance with the spec in order to keep his vehicle in into uh, warranty. Uh, so he went out and bought one, and not this this particular brand, but he went out and bought a, uh, a micrometer style clip type. So I would say, yeah, anybody who uh, is going to be doing any type of work um, at home, you don't need a torque wrench to torque your wheels down. I mean, and let's be honest with you, people have been doing that for years. Uh, and I never had a tire flop because it was not properly fastened or seated on the hub. So, you know, I don't feel like I, oh, now I'm safe because I have this torque wrench. But I am happy to have it. I am happy to be able to do it properly in my shop. Uh, and then if I'm ever working on someone else's vehicle, um, I can rest assured that um, I've, I've torqued the wheels down accordingly, uh, which does give you some level of uh, satisfaction uh, and, and reassurance. So check out guys, also tools. Um, I'll leave a link in the description. I'll uh, include all that information for you guys if you're interested. Follow my link to the website to save yourself a little bit more money on top of this. This is a great Christmas gift for someone, your dad, brother, best friend, etc. Um, if they don't have one, I would recommend it. Don't forget to check out also tools guys. They've got great deals on a lot of their tools. This is the uh, three piece push button adjustable pliers, water pump pliers. I did a review on these, gave you my opinion of them based upon some of the top tier brands, Knipex, et cetera. I think they're really, really nice. Uh, great deal for the money. Uh, also the uh, tongue and groove adjustable water pump pliers, three piece set as well. Did a review on these. I think I dropped that video. If not, I'll, I'll double check. Uh, but really, really nice stuff from Ulsa Tools. Ulsa Tools is really going after it, guys. I'm, I'm really excited with them. Uh, absolutely a great company to work with as far as uh, ambassador, being an ambassador, a product ambassador. Um, really, really good to work with. So very, very happy with that. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. I don't know what more to share with you guys. This is an Ulsa Tools video, so I don't want to go and um, taint it with anything else. So, yeah, guys, half-inch torque beam or um, split beam torque wrench, Ulsa Tools, guys. Get you one of these. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Midwest underscore tool review. Um, also, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Make sure that you've got that bell selected so you can get notification whenever I drop a new video. Got lots of new stuff coming out, guys. I've got some big projects, got some little projects. You know, kind of keeping busy for the rest of the year. What else are you going to do when you, you're stuck at home all the time right now, right? So uh, make sure you keep checking. Another video's dropping tomorrow. Another video's dropping on Friday. And I'm thinking about going live. There's been a lot of talks about live streams and whatnot, and I'm thinking like, you know what? I should probably do a little bit more of that. Um, I don't know. So let me know what you guys think about that idea, going live. Um, you know, I, I don't mind doing it. Uh, I think it's pretty awesome. I love I love being on other people's channel doing it, but I don't. I think I've only done it a few times on my own channel. So if you guys are willing to come hang out with me for a couple hours, I think I'll probably do that um, this week. So, uh, yeah, guys, catch me on the next one. I'm out. Peace.